Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI again because I just published a video an hour ago. Go ahead and check that out as well. We have a homemade problem today. E to do E to the I equals A plus BI, which is the name of this channel by the way, take note. And we're supposed to evaluate A squared plus B squared. It's like, what? You have a complex number on the right hand side in standard form. On the left hand side, you have a very exponential expression with I right so how do we deal with something like that don't worry no worries we're gonna use Euler's formula which is just amazing because Euler is amazing right don't you agree so let's see how we can solve this problem to be able to solve this problem we're gonna use the polar form of a complex number if you're new to complex numbers go ahead and check out my lecture videos I made a playlist and I kind of broke complex numbers down into quick, easy, digestible pieces. Anyways, what does Euler's formula say? E to the I theta equals cosine theta plus I times sine theta. And this is just amazing because it kind of builds a bridge between imaginary numbers, trigonometry, integers, so on and so forth. So many things. Amazing, amazing, mind blowing. Okay. If you ask me one of, one of the, what is one of the most amazing equations, I would say this one. Do you find or do you, do you know another one, equation that is as amazing as this one or even more amazing? Let us know, okay? Anyway, so this is the polar form or the Euler's formula. We're going to go ahead and use this. But before we can use it, let's start with something simple. Now, if you can't figure out what e to the e to the i is and imagine... What is e to the e to the e to the e to the i, right? It's going to be crazier, but guess what? We have to get to the bottom of this. But to get to the bottom, you have to get to the top. Isn't that kind of crazy? Look, you have to start here. When you have a tower, exponential tower, you need to start at the very peak. Okay, great. So we're going to be looking at e to the i first. But what is e to the i? How do you go from e to the i theta to e to the i? Easy, by way of substitution, replace theta with 1. And don't get me wrong, I'm not talking about 1 degrees or degree. I'm talking about 1 radian, right? So, because this must be in radians, right? Otherwise, are they going to work? That's a good question. But anyways, replace theta with 1 and you're going to get cosine of 1 plus i times sine of 1. Awesome. We got e to the i and hopefully we can go from this to e to the e to i by way of substitution again. Let's go ahead and plug this in, right? Right here. That's going to give us e to the cosine 1 plus i times sine 1. Beautiful, right? Now, we do have a complex number in the exponent, so we kind of have to separate it, right? We can go ahead and split it up, though. But something interesting about this is that when we split it up, it's going to split up very nicely. You'll see. So, we can write this as e to the cosine 1 times e to the i sine 1. And remember Euler's formula, e to the i theta. What does this look like? Just like that, right? But in this case, our new argument, if I can call that alpha if you want, right, will be our new expression. Don't get me wrong, cosine 1 is not part of this. Sine 1 is the angle. Make sense? It's a sine of another angle, but that's fine. <laughs> okay, cool. So how do you write e to the i alpha? You write it as cosine alpha plus i sine alpha. That's why substitution is awesome. It's big, okay? Now, let's go ahead and replace alpha with sine 1, and then you, hopefully you'll see what I'm talking about. So now this expression becomes e to the cosine 1 times the expression cosine of sine 1, which is our alpha, plus i times sine of sine 1, again, which is our alpha, all right? So this is our number e to the e to the i. That's how we can write it. And we can continue to do this with e to the e to the e to the i, e to the e to the i. And what if you have infinitely many of these? Something to think about, right? There's going to be too many expressions. Anyways, so this is our expression. And remember, if this can be written as a plus b i, right? We're supposed to find a squared plus b squared. So let's go ahead and write this as a plus bi. But how do you do it? Distributive property. That's amazing, right? 
I mean, distributed property is amazing. I know some people are like, why do you get too excited? What is ama so amazing about distributed property? I still think it's amazing. All right, anyways. So this is our expression, and this is e to the e to the i, and we said that it can be written as a plus b i. So this is a, and this is b. Well, I kind of wrote it as a plus i b, but guess what? A plus i b is the same as a plus b i. Should I name the channel a plus i b? I don't know. I just named it a plus b i. I didn't really think about it. So how do you find a squared plus b squared? Easy. Write what a is, cosine 1 times cosine of something, and then b is e to the cosine 1 again, but this time sine of sine 1. And now we're going to go ahead and square each of these expressions. a squared is going to be e to the cosine 1 squared. It's not cosine 1 squared, by the way. It's e to the 2 cosine 1, because you're going to multiply the exponents by 2, times cosine squared of sine 1. And b squared is going to be e to the 2 cosine 1 again, times sine squared of sine 1. Now something magical or mathematical is going to happen here. Hocus pocus, abracadabra. When you add these two things, we have a common factor, which we can pull out, e to the power 2 cosine 1. And then inside the parentheses, you're going to have sine squared or cosine squared sine 1 plus sine squared sine 1. Sorry about the messy writing, but I hope you get the idea. Sine squared plus cosine squared is always 1. Forget about this. And this is the answer. Amazing, right? Cool. Yes. Well, let's see if we can approach this problem a little differently. I don't know if you're going to call this the second method or an alternative approach, whatever you want to call it. I'll just continue. So we got this expression so far. Let's go back to where we got e to the e to the i, right? Because I want to tell you something. Remember, we had e to the cosine 1 times e to the i sine 1. And then we separated these, e to the cosine 1. And then we wrote the e to the i sine 1 as cosine of sine 1 from Euler's formula, right? Plus i times sine of sine 1. Remember that? Okay. So I'm going to take it from here, okay? Now, with the second approach, here's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to do it directly. Because how do you write a complex number? r times e to the i theta. This is the modulus, and this is the argument. In this case, this is the argument. We called it alpha, remember? So this is the modulus. Wait a minute. What do you mean this is the modulus? That's not the answer. Well, it's just r. But r is the square root of a squared plus b squared. If z is a plus b i, then the absolute value of z is just going to be the square root of a squared plus b squared from Pythagorean theorem, right? By definition. So we're just going to take that expression and square both sides because we're trying to find a squared plus b squared and it's going to be e to the power 2 cosine 1 as before and this brings us to the end of this video thank you for watching i hope you enjoyed it please let me know don't forget to comment like and subscribe i'll see you next time with another video until then be safe take care and bye bye